there is uh, the scene in the Essex countryside. The final night of fight camp is just two days away now. How time flies when you're having fun. Lee Wood stopped Zhu Shan in week one. Alan Babich proposed here uh, after bashing Mark Bennett around for five rounds uh, to his girlfriend in week two. And in just two days' time, week three, Joshua Boazzi is in the ultimate acid test against Ricard Bolotniks. Um, sink or swim time for Joshua Boazzi it, now? It really is. Firstly, I can't believe we're on week three already. Know, it's it's it? gone by so quickly. I'm, I'm gutted as well. It's been amazing. It has been it, great. It's been so good. Everything from, you know, the, the production to, to the people that we've seen here, and most importantly, the fighters that have given us some real entertainment. I was so impressed last time with Galahad and, and, the, and the show. But moving on to this week, what a cracker. Uh, Joshua Boazzi, we know how good he is. Um, had a, uh, a few tests against uh, Kalik that, that evening that he passed. Uh, and then the knockout against Dos Santos, wow. Yeah. I mean, absolutely epic. But Blotniks has got an opportunity to change his life. He won a golden contract, looked good against Serge Michel. Broke that broke him down over 12 rounds and, and got the, got the finish done. It's just look, it's a, it's a really really good fight, and I think the winner of this is not far off. Then you know you're talking eliminators or fighting a gatekeeper or something like something close to challenging for a world title. Because it's um, five years since Boazzi went and, and did what he did in Rio. I think a lot of people all over the world saw how destructive he was. He's been a much slower build as a professional. Of course, some of it's been through no fault of his own, through injuries and then, yeah. of course, the pandemic. But, you know, five years in now, people, I suppose, understandably getting a little bit impatient and, and they, yeah. they want to see him off the leash now. This is absolutely the leash is off. Oh, of course. Look, I'd, I'd, us as boxing fans, the real boxing people will know how good Bolotniks is. I think for the others, if you haven't seen him, check uh, Ricard Bolotniks out. He's a serious fighter. He's dangerous. He can punch with both hands. He's awkward. Uh, he's rangy. He, he can do a bit of everything. And uh, this might sound silly as well, but he's in the shape of his life. I've never seen him looking so good. Um, he understands he's going to have to be. Uh, uh, he's turned up and... Look, I, I'm buzzing for it. Honestly, it's um, it's got all the ingredients to be an absolutely barn, uh, barn burner. Uh, speaking of uh, light heavyweights, we hear that uh, one or two uh, of our new Olympic medalists may be in the house on Saturday night. We'll keep it under wraps uh, for now, but um, we'll certainly be speaking to a few of them on the night if we do. Um, six Olympic medals from a squad of 11 wow. in Tokyo, uh, and we're looking to um, take some of those on board, I'm sure, um, in the near future. What an amazing feat that was, just a, a word on our Olympics. Incredible. Like, I mean, I was in awe of the talent uh, that I was witnessing all through um, the team. It was incredible. It, it just shows you how far the, the, the Great Britain team have gone from when I was there. You know, now they're one of the, the main nations up there with America, Cuba, Russia, etc. the Kazakhs, Uzbek. You know, we wasn't one of the main nations. And now look at the work they've done at the EIS in Sheffield. We are producing some real superstars and the, the uh, future of British boxing is extremely bright. Yeah, um, press conference this afternoon, of course. Uh, we're here with all of our fighters on the bill. There's uh, five uh, on the televised bill, live on the zone, seven o'clock local time. There are two more, um, including Selfa Barrett and uh, Viral Simeon, uh, who I know you boxed uh, alongside in the amateurs, and a name you know well. has been around for a long, long time, the veteran. So those two will open the show. We'll be live before the bell, half past five local time, uh, and the fight will start shortly after that. Eight three-minute rounds um, at £139 catch rate limit. So let's head over to Zelfa Barrett, who's on the stage now with Eddie Hearn. Well, good afternoon. The final week of Fight Camp this Saturday, live and exclusively on DAZN around the world as we close out with a tremendous card. Some of the biggest stars and names in world boxing, of course, headlined by an incredible fight. Joshua Boazzi against Ricard Bolotniks in what is a WBA eliminator for the world title. Tremendous fight and lots to take you through before we get to that main event. Delighted to be joined by what can only be described as a late addition to this card, Zelfa Barrett, welcome, welcome. You'll take on Virel Simeon this Saturday. Um, we know the background, you were due to fight in Mexico. That card got delayed because it went on to Red List as well. Training really and preparing yourself for what looks to be the Kiko Martinez rematch later on in the year in Manchester, but great to get out this Saturday and a much needed uh, trip for you, eight rounds this weekend. Of course, you know, um, I was working hard because the fight was fighting in Mexico, fighting a Mexican and then, um, you know, you've done your magic and got me here, so I'm, I'm just happy to be here, so I appreciate it, thank you. It's been a tough uh, couple of months for you and the family. I mean, the passing of your mum um, has been difficult for you as well. Important to get back and stay in the gym and obviously get this eight rounds under your belt before moving into a major fight for your career later this year. 
of course, you know, um, my mum was my best friend. You know, she's with me now. They look got Romeo and me, so she'd want me to fight. She'd want me to be bumming around or just be feeling sorry for myself. So something I had to do. Like I said, I appreciate getting me out, keeping my mind active. Obviously, the division right now is, is red hot domestically as well. You have Joe Caldina, uh, who fights this weekend. Um, so Martin J. Ward losing a final eliminator as well. But you're right there now with the IBF. Your ranking's there. I know you want to have that rematch with Kiko Martinez as well. You feel like you won the fight, so do I, but it was close. One bad scorecard probably made people uh, see more controversy than there was, but that's definitely on the radar for you. Kiko Martinez will box in Spain in a couple of weeks, but we'd love to do that one in Manchester and, and make sure everybody knows 100% you won that fight. Of course, that's what I want personally. I want it for myself because, you know, I know I won the fight, but I can perform better than that, you know, and we've, we've changed a few things in the in the background, so we're ready for this guy, and he won't go 12 rounds. I know that for a fact he won't go 12 rounds, so, you know, beat this guy Saturday, you know, back in the gym, Kiko Manchester, and then, you know, I'm ready for these big boys, or the world title eliminators, or the European, I'm ready for all of them now, but I just want to beat Kiko, and then I'm ready then. Well, we'll make that fight. I know the gym is buzzing as well up in Manchester with Pat, and I think Lyndon is here as well. Good positivity there at the moment, good momentum up, at, up in that gym in Manchester. Of course, you know, we all started at the bottom. Amateur days coming up, so Linda's my brother, so it's nice to have him here and just, you know, we're both shining together and, you know, it's just a ripple effect, Saturday night performance and then, you know, onwards and upwards. Well, it's tremendous to see you back in the ring. Well done. We look forward to seeing Zelfa Barrett return to fight camp this weekend, of course, scene of one of the most stunning knockouts as well at fight camp last year. This time there'll be crowds, you'll enjoy it much more as he looks his, to continue his campaign in the super featherweight division, win on Saturday, and then look to make that Kiko Martinez rematch in Manchester later this uh, year. We're gonna have a, a quick photo up here with Zelfa, and then we'll be heading back to Chris and Darren. Well, tough year um, for that young man there. Um, never easy to, to lose a parent, but at such a young age as well. So, yeah, yeah he's been through it. Good to see him back and with a, with a smile on his face there. Um, I, I was thinking about his, his boxing career. You know, it was, uh, I suppose, the, the Martinez fight was, was far from his best performance. Mm -hmm. um, I think perhaps there was more life in the old dog than people would yeah. had given, uh, well, certainly more miles on the clock than, than people had given Martinez credit for. But he wasn't good that night. I think the consensus was that he, he could have easily got you know um, the, the the loss on the record against Eric Donovan. Um, he, he was Donovan was in a great flow, and he found that left hook to get him out of jail. I think he he won't take for granted the position that he's in because he'll know how different things could be at this stage of his career. Mm. Yeah, I, I think um, it, it just shows you how quickly your career can go from rave reviews to wow, you know, the next best thing to well, you know that was uh, wasn't wasn't great. But I think they were valuable rounds uh, rounds against Martinez. You know, a, a former world champion, and if anyone. Follow, who follows Kiko Martinez's Instagram, he does not stop training. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, though he's well into his 30s, he's a young man physically. Uh, and it was a very good test uh, for, for Zelfa, who, look, he's a very good talent. And um, I, I, I expect him to, to go on and do good things. Yeah, well, it was some sensational stoppage for him uh, at last year's fight camp. The man that opened fight camp, Reese Bellotti, is also on our Before the Bell show against uh, young Ray Ford um, from the United States. This is going to be a really interesting fight. Yeah. Um, potentially last chance saloon for Reese Bellotti to, yeah. to make a statement um, and get his career back on track. Both guys are on the stage now with Eddie Hearn. Let's hand over to him. Yeah, thanks, guys. I absolutely loved this fight on Saturday night for so many different reasons. Raymond Ford against Reese Bellotti for the WBA Continental featherweight title. Ray Ford, one of the standout amateurs in the US, been looking sensational. Very unlucky to have a draw last time out in a fight that he definitely won and one of the top prospects in US boxing against Reese Bellotti, former Commonwealth champion and always in entertaining fights. Absolutely must win fight for both of these guys. Two matchroom fighters from across each other's pond. Ray, I'll start with you. Welcome, mate. That last performance was a frustrating one. Felt you won the fight, you did as well, but straight back into the fire in an absolute must win fight this Saturday. Yes, most definite. This one? Uh, yeah. Um, my last fight, uh, it was a great learning experience. I fought another t uh, undefeated prospect. But what people don't know is uh, I took that fight on a short notice. And on top of that, uh, I had I recently had a daughter. So like that, I had to take a week off. 
um, during my camp. But uh, my team was trying to get me to, you know, pull out from the fight. But I was telling them, like, even on my worst day, he couldn't beat me. And that was true. I feel like I won the fight easily. But that's in the past now. We're here with Reese Bellotti, so my full focus is on him. You desperately wanted that rematch. We tried everything we could to make it, doubled his money, trebled his money, whatever it was. He wasn't interested. I think he likes the draw with Ray Ford on his resume. But you wanted to come straight back into a big fight as well. You take on Reese Bellotti, very exciting fighter, punches very hard. You're over in the UK as well. These are the kind of challenges you want now in your career. Most definitely. And I feel like Reese Bellotti somewhat resembles Aaron Perez. So that's, this is a, that was another reason why I wanted to take this fight to show people that I can handle pressure easily. So um, I know Reese Bellotti going to be there. He's going to come to fight. He's going to be tough. And that's what I'm looking for. Obviously, a lot of your U.S. teammates you would have seen in the, the Olympics, a tremendous uh, Olympics for the U.S. team. First like that in a long while, Kayshawn and Richard Torres and Duke Reagan, et cetera, as well. Those guys now looking to make their name in the pro ranks and you coming out of that amateur setup, you feel like now is your time to stamp your authority. First title as well. This is a major moment for your career on Saturday. Definitely very excited about this being my first title. Uh, I definitely was watching the Olympics. I was, you know, supporting the USA team. Keyshawn Davis, Duke Reagan, Tiger Johnson, uh, O'Shea Jones, Richard Torres. Shout out to all of them. They did their thing in the Olympics. And uh, hopefully... They we can all run it up and do the same thing how we've been doing in the amateurs and the pros now. Thank you, Ray. Reese, welcome back, mate. Another fight camp for you, this time with fans. Um, another big fight for you, obviously, a very good fighter in Ray Ford, inexperienced really in the pro ranks as well, and now yourself sitting here really as someone who's more experienced now in the pro ranks. Good fight, tough fight, but you look in great shape. Yeah, like you say, I'm back again. It's good to be back, back with fans. A, bit, a little bit different of an atmosphere. And it's a good fight. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to get back to winning ways. Title on the line as well. And when you're in these kind of fights, you're almost sort of one win away from going on and actually having another major fight as well. For you, I know your defeat to Jordan Gill, you know, you've been in, in those tough fights as well, but as motivated as ever to do the business on Saturday. Yeah, probably more than ever. Like you say, like obviously, I've been in tough, I've been in tough fights. People, people that have beat me, they're, they're, good, they're good fighters. They're going on to do really good things. So I'm at that level where... I now need to push on again and get a win and, like you say, propel myself for more and bigger fights. I know you always used to rely on your power in there and as you've stepped up and, and boxed those, you know, smart fighters that move and, and Ray is another one, Jordan Gill, Walsh, those kind of guys, added a little bit more to your game and that experience just giving you a little bit more ring craft now, knowing that sometimes that's not enough to win fights against opposition like this. Yeah, of course, you can't always rely on that. You have to have a different game plan. You have to work on different strategies to get, get to these fighters. You can't just think, oh, I'll just go in there and bomb them out. It's not always the, the case and... Hopefully you see that Saturday night. We've been working, uh, we've been getting great sparring, and that will show Saturday night. Well, Reese Raymond, good luck. This is a tremendous, tremendous rap matchup. Ray Ford against Reese Belotti, the WBA Continental Featherweight title, Saturday night fight camp live on the zone. Gentlemen, let's have a photo here, please. Yeah, there was a, a time when that man on your screen is, uh, well, not us, obviously, Rhys Bellotti was the kind of domestic danger man in the featherweight division. He was 11-0, um, I think it was 10, 10 knockouts. And, you know, things can, can change so quickly in boxing, can't they? You know, yes. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm sorry, that I was just saying, sometimes a fighter's best asset can be their worst, it can be their downfall. Mm. And the fact that he can punch so hard, he relied on it a bit too much, was loading up, etc. It's about sitting traps. When you go through the levels, you can't be just winging away. You will get found out. And uh, I think that's the case now. He's understood against Jordan, etc., that he can't just be throwing big shots. That won't work against Ford. He's got to be smart. He's got to be smart. But the one thing that we did see in the Aaron Perez fight, and as you know, listen, context around a fight is everything. And he said, you know, became a dad for the first time and so that you know, had to take a week off but in that fight he didn't seem to really like the pressure no, particularly he a very slick sharp classic american style southpaw but when the pressure was put on him wasn't wasn't handling it brilliantly and Bellotti is physically strong he's got heavy hands and as we saw in that fight um, this young man can be hit too 
Yeah, you can. Look, sometimes some fighters just don't use, you know, they, they opt for the Philly shell. They lean back with it yeah. and their chin's up in the air. And that's what Ford did against Perez. He was just far too easy to get caught and uh, didn't like the pressure. When I say Reese Pilotti has to be smart, he needs to be smart but ferocious. He's got to be aggressive and set traps. Well, one man uh, who is entertained in spades is Cash Farouk. He's up against the man with a fascinating story, Gerardo Castillo. Without further ado, let's hand over to these two men uh, for our third fight on the bill. Thanks, guys. Yeah, this is a, a tremendous matchup. Cash Farouk against Gerardo Castillo. We've seen so many great matchups between you know, our home fighters, if you like, and Mexican fighters over these last couple of months. And I promise you, you are about to see another one on Saturday night. The vacant WBC International Bantamweight Championship on the line. Cash, seems like every time you're out, you're in entertaining fights. You know all about Castillo. This is going to be a great fight on Saturday. Yeah, 100%. I've been training really, really hard for this fight. And uh, I know he's going to bring a good fight on uh, the Saturday, but I'm prepared for whatever he brings. And, um, you know, and uh, I'm, willing to, I'm doing anything to win. You know, this, and get pick up another title as well. Yeah, another title for you, moving up those world rankings as well. You love to fight, Cash. I mean, you love to get in there, mix it at long range and at close range. We've seen you, like I said, last time out was tremendous as well. Is that just what we're going to see for Cash? I'm, I'm sure your trainers will tell you not to get involved with Castillo like you have done in the past. Yeah. We know he's dangerous. We know he can punch as well. But you just love to fight. Yeah, 100%. Obviously, that last fight, I kind of got dragged into it a wee bit, into a fight. But... You know, you want to win the easiest way possible, and that's what I'm going to do on Saturday night. And I went back in the gyms, back in the gym, and worked on the things I made mistakes in my last fight. And uh, this fight, you know, I mean, I'm going to do whatever I can to win, put in the best performance, and probably win the easiest way possible. You know, if it, ha if it has to, if that means going to the well, I will. You know what I mean? I know there's been a lot of fighters that have looked past Mexican fighters. You know, Josh Warrington was yeah. talking about Kanzu and other big unification fights. Uh, of course, James Tennyson was talking about those big fights. They both came unstuck as well. I have to ask you yeah. about Lee McGregor. I mean, yeah. we spoke about it there. He's shown his desire. I've spoken to his team about yeah. that big rematch for Scotland. I know that your mind is 100% focused on Castillo on Saturday, but of course, that is a fight that will always sit in the back of your mind. To be honest, at the moment, it's not. You know, I mean, I'm fully focused on Saturday night, and uh, I've been like that through my amateur career. Since my first fight, I was like, I'm going to take a fight at a time. Until this day, I just take a fight at a time, because uh, boxing, as you know, is, you know, I mean, you don't know where you can go after your, your next fight. So for me, Saturday night, and that's all I'm thinking about. I don't care what happens after that. So at well, the moment, it's, it's close to you I'm focused on. Good luck to you, Cash. Um, Gerard Castillo and, and your trainer as well. Um, we are blessed in this sport to have so many stories behind fighters incredible story Gerard Castillo actually born deaf and unable to speak all of his conversations happen uh, through sign language with his trainer an incredible story that I haven't seen before in boxing um, both Gerard and, and his trainer communicate by their own sign language not an official sign language and I'm going to speak to the, the trainer now welcome via a translator as well um, I've spoken to your promotional team this is a, a very talented fighter who, with two defeats on his record, both, I've been told, were not really defeats. This is the ultimate opportunity in his career so far. Eh, bienvenidos, primero. Uh, ha hablado con el promotor y con todos y dicen que es muy talentoso como peleador, que ha tenido solo dos derrotas y que no de verdaderamente eran derrotas. ¿Qué, cómo, qué quiere decir esta oportunidad para él? Pues muchas gracias por recibirnos, por darnos la oportunidad. Este, yo creo que pues cada pelea es diferente, ¿no? el récord queda atrás, nosotros venimos preparados a ganar esta pelea, eh, Luis Gerardo quiere el cinturón, este, está pues eh, confiado en que va a ganar, él confía en su, en su trabajo, nosotros venimos a hacer historia por lo que haga dentro del cuadrilátero, no por sus condiciones Thank you so much for having us. Um, we think that each fight is different. Uh, we're putting our record, the record, and the losses behind us, and we're prepared to win. Luis Gerardo wants the belt. He's confident in his work and that he's going to win. Uh, he wants to make history in the ring, and not because of his condition, but just because he wants to put up a good fight. Obviously, the story with, with Castillo, I know you focus on, on the fighting, but it is the most incredible story I heard about this only a couple of days ago, um, a very special relationship you two 
have between each other. We know a trainer's relationship with a fighter is always special, but you particularly communicate in your own way and must be extremely close as a team. En la historia, claro que todos sabemos de Castillo, um, claro que queremos enfocar en, en las peleas y todo, pero también la historia es tan increíble y solo la escuchó hace unos días, que es una relación muy especial entre ustedes, cada entrenador tiene una relación especial con su peleador, pero esta es particularmente especial, ¿no? Sí, claro, este, eh, pues necesariamente tenemos que tener mucha comunicación, dentro de la vida real, no nada más en el gimnasio, para poder ir mejorando nuestra comunicación, que es a base de señas. Eh, es muy complicado, es muy a veces desesperante eh, dar una instrucción, dar una estrategia, dar una motivación con las condiciones físicas de la sombra, pero cada día mejoramos nuestra propia comunicación y, y tenemos la confianza de que... De que pues no tenemos consideraciones dentro del RIN y que eh, nosotros venimos con lo que traemos de, de talento, tanto Gerardo como los conocimientos que hemos ido adquiriendo y, y que eso es igual a, a lograr el cinturón. Yeah, of course, we have great communication um, and we have to have it outside of the gym as well, not just in the gym in order to create these signs and create this language. Sometimes it's, confident, uh, it's complicated and sometimes, you know, we get desperate with, to give instructions and strategy and motivation with the physical situation that they're in. Um, but they improve their communication every day and they're confident that they won't have to worry in the ring about communication um, and that the talent will show with everything that he's learned over the years and that they'll have everything they can to win the belt. And finally, we've seen some tremendous victories for Mexican fighters. Maurizio Lara, Giovanni Straffon. You're coming to win on Saturday night and you're ready for war out there at fight camp. Han visto muchas peleas muy buenas, muchas victorias muy buenas de peleadores mexicanos como Mauricio Lara y Straffon. Um, ¿Vienen a ganar este fin de semana? ¿Vienen a ganar este sábado? Eh, sí, estamos confiados en ganar, estamos confiados en nuestro trabajo. Por cierto, ahorita que mencionas a, a Bronco Lara, eh, coincidió la concentración con él. Eh, Bronco en unos días más viene a pelear, pero creo que siempre, siempre nosotros ponemos todo de nuestra parte para, como mexicanos guerreros que, que somos, venir a dar un buen espectáculo y, y que no se van a arrepentir de, de vernos contratado. They're just, they're very confident in winning and confident in the work that they've done. Um, you mentioned Lara and their camps actually coincided uh, for this fight. They coincided um, and he's obviously coming to fight here soon. Uh, and they say as Mexicans, we always put everything as Mexicans and as warriors in the ring to bring a good show. So no one's going to regret watching. It's going to be a great fight and they're confident they're going to win. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you, Cash, as well. This is going to be a tremendous fight. Do not miss this fight. Cash Farouk, in my opinion, one of the top, top fighters in the bantamweight division. And Gerardo Castillo bringing real war on Saturday night at Fight Camp. Gentlemen, we'll have a photo up here, please. Unbelievable story that that young man has. Um, there is a, a brilliant video that we've just watched. It's just gone out on YouTube, actually, on Matron Boxing's uh, YouTube channel about the relationship that, um, that these two have and how they do communicate. Uh, and on fight night, it's going to be fascinating. Lots to, uh, for us to, to watch out for um, in this fight. Um, coach will be... Uh, Alberto, Alberto Sanchez will be kind of shaking ropes at certain points. Middle rope, top rope, bottom rope mean different instructions. Tapping the ring means different instructions. He obviously tries not to, to do it too much so as to distract his man. Yeah. But I mean, you know, for, for a guy that, that can't speak and, and can't hear, the, the, the progress he's made and where he is is beyond phenomenal. And I, I, hate, I hate to say, sorry to interrupt, I hate to say there will be a lot of people when they hear this story in full will be rooting for him. Well, when you, when you get narratives like that, someone that's had 
had it as hard as anybody. Mm. You know, it's incredible. There's more that will unfold, I think, when you see these videos. Uh, he, he's had it so difficult, you know, with his family, etc. He doesn't live a great life. Boxing is everything to him. Yeah. And he's got the opportunity, and he said it in these videos that will, will be released, that it's his, it's his everything. This is the opportunity for him to change his life. Um, he's from the roughest parts of, of South America, and um, that you see them there doing their own sign language. He wasn't able to, to be schooled properly um, at a proper sign language. And he's a good coach too, uh, Sanchez. He's yeah. in the corner of Israel Gonzalez for that um, world title challenge against Sharon Anka Hass in 2018. He knows, he knows his stuff, but I mean, in many ways, the biggest challenge of, of his career as a coach as well, taking this young man and knowing how much it means to him. Mm. He, he, of course, is, a, is almost his, his link to the world in many ways too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, his only real sign of uh, communication. Yeah. Uh, but amazing. It is an ama uh, amazing narrative. Um, not been able to see much of him. You know, you look on YouTube, there isn't much of him. So uh, I'm interested to see him actually on, on Fight Night. But I've been so impressed with Cash Fruit. Very good fighter, in my opinion. Should have got the, the win over Lee McGregor. Uh, always improving. Uh, lives and breathes the sport. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Came for a tough scrap, actually, Lee McGregor. Uh, a few days ago, I spoke to him after that against Vincent Legrand. He was down early in the fight, but showed a lot to, to get back through it. Maybe those two will meet somewhere down the line, but business to attend to for cash for route 10 threes. That's the first uh, opening the bill on the zone on at 7 o'clock local time. Then it is Hopi Price, super bantamweight prospect, uh, up against um, Claudio Grande. Let's hand over to Eddie, who's back on the stage with both the guys. Well, the tough fights continue here at Fight Camp. No easy fights is the mantra. Hopi Price, 4-0 against Claudio Grande, 5-0. Hopi, start with you. Welcome. It's been a while coming, but you have got two fights scheduled in the space of, what, four weeks. But firstly, a very tough, undefeated opponent for you this weekend at Fight Camp. Yeah, first of all, uh, it's good to be back here at Fight Camp. There's a bit more of an atmosphere this time. And yeah, two fights scheduled in within the space of four weeks, but um, let's not get it twisted. Uh, most prospects want to took this fight no one have got a 10 rounder in the hometown of Leeds in only three weeks time, but these are the fights that I want, you know. Uh, Italian prospect, five and all, three knockouts, and all I'm concentrating on is Saturday night and uh, to do a good job on him. We know it's difficult for a fighter when they've got a, almost like a bigger fight schedule. We saw it with Anthony Fowler on the first week. We'd agreed the Liam Smith fight and he goes in there and it's, it's, it's sometimes difficult to fight in the same kind of manner. But for you, just focus to, to get the job done uh, on Saturday night and then Headingly comes after that. Yeah, you know, fully focused on Saturday night. Uh, Headingly's in, in the back of my mind. Uh, I just get the job done first on Saturday night and then we can look towards Headingly after that. Obviously, with the pandemic, it's been difficult to get everybody out and prospects out in the same way that you'd like to get them out. You're someone that would probably have boxed five or six times a year. But what it has done is moved you at a quicker rate. Dave and the team have sort of looked at it and said, well, we're good enough to move quicker, so why shouldn't we move quicker? You have a 5-0 on Saturday. I think Hussein is 19-1 and or something like that. Really, after those two performances, you're knocking on your door of British titles and eliminators as well. But it seems like you and Dave are happy to move quickly and you're confident that you can get victories at this kind of level. Definitely. It's what I wanted anyway, to step up faster. And if anything, it's been a bit of a blessing in disguise because I've had more time to work in, in the gym and more time to spar top quality fighters. Kid Galahad won the world title last week. I've done numerous rounds of him throughout lockdown and I feel it's brought me on a lot more as a fighter than it would have done fighting three, four more fights against these lower level opposition. So now I'm just ready to fight these unbeaten guys and, and step up and look good doing so. Claudio, welcome uh, via your translator there as well. 4-0 and against 5-0. and This is quite unusual, but should be a great fight on Saturday. Claudio, benvenuto. Il tuo avversario, anche lui, ha quattro match in battuto. Sarà un grande match uh, sabato? E per me sì. Io sono venuto qua per, per dare tutto. Sono venuto per vincere. E sono contento per questa grande opportunità. E non vedo l'ora di combattere. I'm grateful for the opportunity. I come here to win and uh, I can wait for Saturday. Obviously, with the zone now in Italy and, and our relationship with OPI, a big opportunity for you. You're going to be giving away a lot of height, like everybody does, to Hopi Price, but you're ready to bring a great fight on Saturday. Dice adesso con la nuovo accordo che abbiamo in Italia, che c'è da zona, questa è una grande opportunità per te per metterti in mostra sabato. Sì, infatti ringrazio via per l'opportunità che, che ho avuto. 
ho avuto un preavviso di, di due settimane, però sarò pronto per mettermi in mostra. Yeah, I will take uh, the opportunity to show my skill on a Saturday and uh, I'm grateful once again for the opportunity. Thank you, Claudio. Thank you, Hopi. The development of one of the top young prospects in British and world boxing, Hopi Price, continues this Saturday live on DAZN against Claudio Grande, 4-0 against 5-0. We look forward to this one live on DAZN. Gentlemen, we have a photo here, please. Never the twain shall meet. It's always That's every, every single time we see each other. I know. Well, I, and I just go, oh, I lost rock, paper, scissors again. It's always, the, it's always the get out of jail free card. And I will get some clarity on this for you guys tomorrow uh, at the weigh-in because uh, I think, well, I'd heard it was over eight rounds, but everything I've seen on the list and on box rec has said six. Um, I know that Colwell's plan, because of the uh, the fight after this, so he's saying they're looking to push for that with the area title, that, so that will be ten. I know they wanted to get him out for eight rounds, so uh, my inkling is this may be eight rounds, but it says six at the moment. But anyway, it's not, mm. neither here nor there at the moment. Um, another um, opportunity for Hopi Price to see what he's been working on. There he is, always in good spirits. Joe, you know, really interestingly, speaking to um, Jordan Gill, speaking to Dave, speaking to, to Lerone, um, they said he is completely unflappable Hopi Price. I know you saw him out in the, uh, the, the Saudi car, didn't you, when he yeah. first boxed? Mm -hmm. But he said, nothing is ever an issue for him today. So whatever I ask him to do, how many rounds he's done, whatever work we've put him through, every time his response is, no problem. And yeah. all of them said his temperament is that of someone that could just go all the way because he just asks, he does everything you ask yeah. him to do. And so far, hasn't really put a foot wrong. No, he hasn't. Very good boxer. And I think that's, that's credit to him and he understands that he he's safe when he's in the ring mm. he believes in himself he believes in his his ability whenever i have gone into the ring and i've and i've been nervous overly nervous and not believed in myself it's because if i've not prepared properly or i've been injured or something like that he's always in great shape he believes in his ability and that he's a real talent well another man who is a real talent and we saw that in gibraltar against chris congo is michael yep. mckinson he's up against jemmy slav as we get to the business end of our card on saturday night and both men are on the stage let's hand you back over to eddie well, another cracking fight, this time in the welterweight division. Uh, massive moment for both of these guys. Michael Mickinson against Ranowski, WBO Global welterweight title. Michael Mickinson now looking at number four in the world, ready to move on and challenge for a world title. Great win last time out in Gibraltar against Chris Congo. This side on the A side, as you were saying earlier, you've worked your way all the way here. You can't let this opportunity slip now. Everyone, all eyes on you, ready to try and move forward to get into a mandatory position for that WBO world title. Big fight against Ranowski on Saturday. Yeah, it feels, feels different being the A-side for a change. Uh, a lot more pressure on me, uh, but that's what, that's what I enjoy. I've got a tough opponent. Um, he's, he's a very solid test for me. He's, uh, he's coming off form as well, so... Um, and him and Anna's team, they're very, very confident. They're very confident. But what I do best is I'll ruin that confidence. Round by round, that confidence will soon fade. Um, you know, I've been fully focused on Ronowski. I haven't been focused on anybody else. Um, get the job done on Saturday. Get the job done in style. And then we move on. We know your style is tough to beat. Last time you boxed, Chris Congo also has a style that's very tough to beat. No one really wanted to fight Chris Congo. Once again, you stepped up in that fight. Ranowski will be aggressive in this fight. You feel his style will suit you. And I know you want to win on Saturday, but you want to make a statement in doing it. Yeah, I know I'll win on Saturday. Uh, I want to look good doing it. I think it's a, he's got the type of style which will make me look good as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to put on a good display of boxing. You kind of slipped under the radar in boxing to get yourself in that top five position in the world. Do you feel a little bit more pressure now to perform and excite? I mean, you saw Kid Galahad last week. Some people have talked about his star. I think he threw over a thousand punches last week, didn't stop coming forward. Is that what we should expect from you this weekend? I know you've got your game plan to win as well, but I get the feeling you want to do it in style as well. Yeah, I do well under pressure, and I proved that last time out. Um, there's a lot more pressure on me this time going into the fight the favourite. Um, like I said, new territory for me, but um, I know like a great, great occasion, a big show and everything. I know I'll perform and I know I'll perform well. Um, and that's all that matters, getting that W. 
Thank you, Michael. Team Ranowski, welcome. Um, you took this fight so quickly. Um, you seem so confident about this fight. You're on an incredible run. This is a big moment for you against the world number four on Saturday. First, thank you, Eddie, for the fight. Thank you, Michael, to the accept to challenge. And now I speak Polish, please, okay? Because Polish language is very beautiful. <laughs> Cóż, jestem gotowy. Trenowałem ciężko dwa miesiące. Nie boję się Mackinsona. Wiem, że jest to dobry zawodnik. Ma niewygodną pozycję, ale wszystko, wszystko wskazuje na to, że, że ja tę walkę wygram, ponieważ na sparingach przerwaliśmy każdy wariant, każdy wariant sparing partnera, każdy wariant Mackinsona i jestem gotowy na każdego Mackinsona. Uh, I'm ready for, uh, for this big fight. Uh, I trained very hard. I had a two month camp. I had a very good sparring partners and I'm ready to show, showcase my skills on Saturday. Please tune in. This is such a huge opportunity for you. If you win this fight, you'll go into the top five in the world. Michael Mickinson is, is very skillful, very tough to beat. You have to really bring the heat to him on Saturday. Tak, wiem ile mam do zyskania, to mnie dodatkowo motywuje, ale na pewno nie skreślam, nie skreślam ani nie, nie lekceważę przeciwnika. Wiem, że też doszedł tam ciężką pracą, walczę teraz o piąte miejsce na świecie i wiem, że mogę to zrobić i być piąty na świecie, także nie mogę się doczekać soboty. I'm very confident I'm going to win this fight and I'm, I'm going to show you on Saturday, please. Uh, Runowski is coming. And finally, Martin, I know you, uh, you love your fighters and you're a little bit crazy. In fact, internally in the team, you are known as Mad Martin, uh, which is a good thing, don't worry. But you really believe that you, your man is going to win this, this weekend. You message me all the time. You've been a big, big supporter of, of the quality of this young man and you believe this is his moment to shine on Saturday. Last time, Runowski wasn't prepared uh, to the fight. He took a short notice. This time, going to be different Runowski. This time, he's going to pass this challenge and we're going to be number five in the world. Please, uh, let's see everything on Saturday. Thank you much, very much, Eddie, to give us this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Team Ranowski, Michael McKinson. Good luck. The WBO Global Welterweight title, but more importantly, the winner of this fight moving towards a shot, the mandatory position for the WBO World title. Look forward to this one live on the zone from Fight Camp. Gentlemen, up here, please. just got the look of a guy that means business, isn't he, Michael McKinson, at this stage of his career. I think mm -hmm. after the Congo fight, just put him on that mainstream map with, yeah. the, with more people seeing what he was all about. And uh, as you say, rank four with, with the WBO now, we all know who the champion is. If you don't, you should really probably get off this and do some research. He's quite good, isn't he? He's fairly good, yeah. <laughs> but listen, you, you look at McKinson and, and his style, that there aren't going to be many guys out there that are going to watch him and think, yeah, I fancy, I fancy myself yeah. to beat that guy. He's so confident. I mean. He, Firstly, his nickname is so apt, you know, the problem. He really is a nightmare for, for anyone. He's so slick, awkward. Um, and last time out against Congo, he boxed really well, got the, uh, the, the win and confidence is through the roof. There's a fight I like, uh, David Avin, who, no, you know, has gone quite quiet since his win over for Kelly. I quite like that fight. Um, so I don't know, yeah, yeah, you I don't, not, argue, don't, you? Don't, don't mind that, that fight at all. But yeah, this is, um, this is a good test for him. One, I think he'll come through. Ronowski's decent, he's strong, he's game, he's durable. He showed that against Kelly, but one there, I think McKinson, uh, wins this one. Yeah, he's a good winner over Mikhail Sorotka as well. Uh, two proper barnstormers against Robbie Davis Jr. a few years ago uh, as well. So that's uh, third from the top of the bill. Second is our chief support, Joe Cordina and Joshua Hernandez. Uh, lightweight contest over 10 rounds. Uh, Cordina back in action um, on Saturday night. Let's hand you over. Both guys are on the stage with Eddie. Thank you, gents. Uh, we move on to our co-main event of the evening. In my opinion, a guy who is right there ready to challenge now for a world title. Joe Cordina against Joshua Hernandez. 
Joe, I'll start with you. We were going to America, and the date got pushed back because of, of Canelo Alvarez situation. The opportunity came up to fight a fight camp, I think maybe 10 days later than we asked you, jumped all over it, been in the gym, ready to go. Great fight for you on Saturday night. Yeah, of course, we were scheduled to fight at the end of August, I think, um, in LA. Obviously, that didn't happen. The opportunity come to fight in fight camp, I haven't fought here yet, and it's um, something I wanted to tick off my list. So, yeah, I jumped at it with um, both hands. Me and Tony said 100%. Um, we had a, a list of opponents, and we wanted to pick the hardest one. And Joshua Hernandez, um, he's 10-3, and three, but then three losses, they... I think they're just little blips. He boxed Chris Colbert, lost to him, um, who's just won an interim title. And uh, a defeat that he has soon uh, turned back over, I think, in his next fight. Um, so, yeah, he's a tough opponent. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you look at that record and, and you may be thinking this might be an easier night's work for you. But I'd probably go to say probably the toughest fight of your career to date. Um, I know the fight in Monaco was a tough one against Tinoco, but this guy, we saw him on one of our cards of Matron Box in USA, had a split decision. In fact, he should have won that fight, I think, against an 18-0 fighter. Had a very good fight with Chris Colbert, as you said. Interestingly, we're speaking to Charlie and Tony and the team and the plans for the future. I know you have your fight, your, your, your mind fixed on Saturday, but basically I kind of get the feeling now you're ready to go. Yeah, well, everything... As, as we said in previous press conferences, and, and you know, um, since I started boxing, um, so since I turned pro, my aim is to be a world champion, and that's what I plan on doing. Um, and obviously, Joshua Hernandez is in my weight, and he's trying to stop me. So I just got to get through Saturday nights. Um, and if I'm to go on and challenge for world titles and win world titles, I've got to beat someone like Joshua Hernandez. Um, but like you said, he's a very, very tough opponent, and his record don't state how actually good he is. So, yeah. And obviously, coming off the Rio games, you've seen your, some of your former teammates as well do so well in those games as well. We always work off those cycles. And obviously now, you'd like to think that when those guys turn pro off the back of Tokyo, the Rio guys are ready to fight for world titles. Massive night for you and your former teammate, Joshua Boatsy. But you feel like now is the time, as you see those guys uh, turn pro and shout out to them as well. Now is your time to get this momentum coming off the pandemic and the hand injury as well. Get this win and move straight forward into major fights and get ready to change for the, the Super Featherweight World title. Yeah, of course. Like you said, um, the cycle before us, like Kai Yafai, four years on, he went and won a world title. Same as Callum Smith. It was, it's just like that same, same sort of scenario. This, um, this time around, the boys have, and, and the girls have uh, finished the Olympics and now it's our time. Don't get me wrong, I'm a couple of fights away, but we're still in touching distance. But um, yeah, they've done amazing, um, as you said. So shout out to them as well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm there, I can see it, I can feel it. And yeah, I just want to get closer and closer. And Saturday nights, I've got to beat Joshua Hernandez to get that little bit closer to my dream, which is to become a world, title, uh, world champion. Thank you, Joe. Joshua, welcome. Um, I know you always stay ready for opportunities. Uh, we talked about this fight for the end of August again, and now you took this opportunity in the UK. I've got to say, when we had you on our show in Chicago, you, you was in one of the best fights I've ever seen. How you didn't get the decision that night against the opponent, I think he was 19-0. and 0. Um, Great fighter. You've been thrown in the deep end time and time again, and another massive opportunity for you on Saturday night. Yeah, I uh, just want to thank the zone, Eddie, uh, Matram for having me here. Uh, it's a blessing. Um, I stay ready, I stay prepared, stay in the gym, working on my mental, physical strengths, and I feel ready to go. You know, the past is the past. Uh, my record's not pretty, but it is what it is. If you do the research, the only person to beat me is Chris Colbert, right? I should be 12 and 1, but it is what it is. I'm here to prove a point. And obviously, when you fight a fighter like Joe Caldina with his world ranking positions, when you take opportunities like this, the rewards are massive. You, know, you win this fight on Saturday, all of a sudden you're probably top 10 in most governing bodies, completely transforms your career. Yes, and God doesn't make mistakes. You know, I'm a man of faith, and uh, coming off of work, I'm a school teacher. So once the school year ended, um, you know, normally I pick up a job or something for the summer, and I was like, you know what? I just feel like I had a blessing coming my way. I don't know what it was, but... I told, I spoke to my brother, spoke to my family. I was like, 
you know, I'm not going to work this summer, just going to focus on the sport, focus on boxing, and here we are. So I'm blessed and I'm ready. Well, you got your opportunity Saturday night out there. Big fight for you and a big fight in the career of Joe Caldina as well. Caldina against Hernandez this Saturday live on The Zone. Gentlemen, if you could have a head-to-head, -head, please. This is um, a late addition to the card. This is potentially the toughest fight of Cordini's career. Yeah, yeah. I I done exactly what Hernandez said. A lot of people do, you know, judge him on his record. And mm. I rang Tony Sims to, to ask about Hernandez before I'd actually watched him ten and three. I sort of said, Tony, is this a stepping stone for Cordina to his next no. big fight? He went, Nah, it does. He can fight since watched his fights with Colbert etc he said there it's the only one that he really lost and he pushes Colbert he works very he very eyes vicious body puncher he's relentless um, the other two fights that he lost he should have got the nod um, he's a real live white he can punch as well and there, and there are I mean you wouldn't you wouldn't definitely wouldn't say they're like for like they've got completely different fundamentals Colbert and, and Cordina but you know one's a switch hitter for a start they've both got very sharp hands very quick feet there yeah. are some stylistic similarities you wouldn't say they're poles apart and like you say he was right in that fight so um, yeah very very interesting interesting one this for Cordina. If yeah. you guys want to push on to world level, he's going to have to come through this. This is uh, the, the best example of a potential banana skin. Yeah. Someone you look at, you think, well, he should be, should be blitzing him there, but flipping it, he's a, he's a very good fighter. Like you say, he's aggressive and a win over Joe puts him so much closer to something of an eliminator or or, or something to potentially you know, achieve his dream of becoming a world champion. Well, it will be uh, new territory this for Hernandez uh, on Saturday night. Cordina, of course, boxed Gavin Gwynn here in boxing great style. Uh, this time last year was uh, in good form doing it, but the main event is now uh, upon us. Joshua Boazzi and Rick Arbolot, and it's the one we've all been waiting for, let's be honest, um, will headline this Saturday night, light heavyweight. Um, both men are now on the stage, standing by. Yeah, thank you, guys. This is it, the main event of the evening for Saturday night to close out Fight Camp. This will be the last fight of the Fight Camp series for 2021 and what a way it will be to finish. This for me has been one of the picks of Fight Camp. This is an absolute crunch clash, a war on Saturday night in what will be an eliminator for the WBA light heavyweight championship of the world. Both guys sitting inside that top five with the WBA, both guys on great runs, both guys super tough, both guys can punch, both guys love to fight. This can only go one way on Saturday night and we cannot wait to witness it. Joshua Boatsy, JB, welcome. The time has come, quite frankly. This is it and these are the fights that I know you get excited for. These are the fights that I know will help you dig deep in camp and uh, a lot of people very excited about Saturday night. Yeah, this is it, Eddie. Um, first of all, thanks everyone for coming out here. And um, yeah, this is the fight, you know, you've been eager to make it happen from early. And um, when this was offered to my team, we said yeah straight away. So um, it's a good fight. The ring outside looks good. So I'm looking forward to it, man. Obviously, a lot of people talk about, you know, you two love to entertain. You love to fight as well. I know there's part of you that that's incontrollable. You know, whatever Virgil Hunter says, and I'm sure you've got your tactics going into this fight, but you do love to get in there and let your hands go. You love to be in close quarters and this guy will be right in front of you on Saturday. Yeah, man, and, that, and that's good for me. You know, I, I say, Eddie, we can go in there to box with a strategy to do this, to do that, but sometimes you're going to have to fight. Sometimes the tactics will go out the window and it's man against man and, you know, we'll see what, what happens and how it goes, but I'll be prepared. I've covered all aspects, whether it's boxing, fighting, whatever it is, I'm, I'm ready, man. You saw Craig Richards do a great job against Dimitri Bivol in, in what I ended up. I haven't seen it, Eddie, but... OK, yeah. fairly close fight. Yeah. Fairly close fight and a good performance from Craig. People talk about the levels between the World Championships and where you've been fighting. This is what we always talk about, the perfect almost yardstick to see if you're ready for those big challenges. And I know you're just focused on Saturday night, but a commanding victory here at Fight Camp would put you in a great position to challenge for the world title. Yeah, for sure. It would be a good gauge to see where I'm at. And I think even for you yourself, you know, you've been kind of wondering where I'm at. So I think a good performance from myself will give you the green light to say, you know what, let's, let's get the belt now. So um, either way, I'll be prepared, man. 
I know, uh, as I said to Joe Caldino, I know you've got GB squad running through your veins. It's been yeah. a massive part of your life. Must have been incredibly proud of, of the men and women in Tokyo who did such a great job. And as I said to Joe, coming off those cycles, we always get to the point where those Olympians will turn pro and the former Olympians are almost ready yeah. to be in those crunch fights. So quick word from an incredible team and uh, also your time now to make that big step. Yeah, man, they did well. Props to the team, the staff, everyone. It was a whole joint effort from Team GB. And, um, you know, they're going to look out, look out for what promoter to come to. I can't say the man's not Eddie, so you have to say that. So um, nah, I'm sure they'll make the right move, but um, incredible from them. And um, it's my time, man. Five years as a pro now. Good opponent, and we'll see how it goes. I'm more than ready. JB, thank you. Ricards, Belotniks, welcome. Um, yeah. So many people so excited about this fight. Golden contract was incredible for you. You became a real fan favourite with your exciting style. Joshua Boatsy, an incredible fighter. This is a massive moment in your career. Yeah, of course. Um, I don't understand everything what you say. Yeah, like Not speak. a lot of people do. Yeah, it's a diff difficult moment. But all right. Hi, everyone. Yeah, of course. Uh, I, won the fight. I won this fight. I won Boatsy straight away after a golden contract. Yeah, and I said that. And now I'm here. Uh, I'm so happy and I'm ready for Saturday night. Uh, I've come here to win only for victory. Uh, I know Boaz is uh, he's a massive star here. Uh, he's a good boxer. He's a uh, hard punch and you know, strong lad, but I'm here only for victory. The, um, one of the comments I saw in your interview was that you want, you want street fight. With Boatsy, is that? I mean, yeah, he loves course. to do that too. Yeah, so I we could that. get a I great fight. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like everyone, uh, I'm sure the old guys was have a street fight. It's 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 incredible. You know, it's perfect. I in Latvia, I so many times was fighting on the streets. Yeah, and boxing is a different. It's more professional. But I know Boatsy will. He, he's ready, and will show the massive fight. You look, as I've seen on your your social media, in tremendous shape. You've trained really hard for this fight. Trainer. Yeah. yeah. Good Shout trainer. Out to the trainer. But you, you look 100% ready for this fight. 101, definitely. Good. And finally, for you as well, this is a big, big fight. You win this fight, you will go on to challenge for the world title. You'll be giving it everything in the ring on Saturday. Uh, I'm thinking only about Saturday. And I'm thinking only about Saturday. But the next, of course, yeah. Yeah, we won a world champion. And... Um, I have uh, the perfect team, uh, Dmitry Shekhele, who training Maris Bredis. Yeah, and so we're, we're looking forward, looking you know, for future. So, but now I'm ready for Saturday. I won, won that fight. Thank you, Ricards. Thank you, Joshua. What a fight. What a way to finish fight camp. Whatever you do on Saturday night, do not miss this fight live on the zone. As the sun goes down at the Matrim HQ, the darkness sets in, the fireworks go off. There will be ultimate fireworks in the main event. Joshua Boatsy against Rickards Bolotniks, an eliminator for the WBA light heavyweight championship of the world. This is going to be an incredible fight. Do not miss it. Gentlemen, if we could have a head-to-head -head here, please. Yeah, it's interesting seeing that head-to-head. -head. It's about uh, an inch or so in height, but the difference you'll see on the night is that Boatsy fights a lot taller than, than Bolotny. He yeah. fights very low, he's kind of crouched in as well, so you, you'll yeah. notice quite a discrepancy on the night when they meet at centre ring. Yeah, really wide stance, Bolotny, so obviously loses height with that. And, and with Boatsy, his base is very good, his foundations, his uh, stance is very good. And look, we've got the main man. Yeah, and the mic's what, at the right height That's as right, well. Don't worry. There you go, mate. <laughs> How, um, how, how, nervous do you, how nervous do you get on nights like this when you've invested a lot in a fighter and, and you know that this is potentially a career-defining night for him? More, more excited than nervous mm. because this is what you want. Mm. You know, like those nights where you know, you know Boatsy can't lose, those nights where you're going through the motions and that's important in the development of a young fighter's career because you've got to go through those stages. But then all of a sudden you get to a stage where it's like, 
That's why I said, this is it, mate. I mean, there, there'll be plenty more this is it moments for Joshua yeah. Boatsy, but this is it. Like, you go into this fight, he could lose this fight. But the, it, it will be a shock, but it won't be one of the big upsets of all time. Ricard Bolotniks is on a tremendous run. Yeah. You see with his team and Maris Bradis, his team, these guys are here to win. He's in tremendous shape, but I, I personally feel that Boatsy is really special. And that's why I'm so excited about this fight, because I want to see it. But you only see it in this kind of environment. You don't see that against Dos Santos and, and guys no. like that. Yeah, you can go through the motions and knock someone out and look good. But what happens when the heat's coming back? You saw it a little bit against Kalic, but I don't think he was prepared for the Kalic fight no. mentally he, in that he way. He was flat, wasn't he? He was very flat. He I, won't be flat on Saturday no, because he's no. aware of the threat of Bolotniks. And you, you mentioned him, the Olympians there. We remember how good he was in Rio and that was because he knew how good the guys were on the opposite side of the ring mm. to him and he mm. came out with that mentality. Yeah. He will not be taking any chances with this guy. I think maybe at some point he's just settled at certain levels and he's actually had, you know, sometimes you can drop your level if someone's, if someone's not there. But he has, he, he won't do that against Ricardo Bolotniks, will he? No, and he can't afford to because he's a serious, uh, serious opponent, live opponent who is very close to potentially change his life. You touched on it there, talking about world titles. Realistically, is it next, an eliminator next for I the winner? I think so. I mean, this is, this is an eliminator. Sometimes you do a final eliminator. Yeah. We represent Dimitri Bivol, so it, it's not going to be a difficult fight to make. Yeah. It's just when you've, when you've made that commitment and investment to a fighter, you don't want to get it wrong. So this, for me, is the perfect night to tell us where, if he goes in and does a job on Bolotniks and, and really, like, I, I believe he's ready to fight for a world title. If he struggles, I mean, you know, if he gets beat, I mean, then of course the answer is no, mm. quite frankly, because there are levels above Bolotniks and Dimitri Bivol is one of them and Better Behev is another one and Joe Smith, you know, they, they, mm. are, they are just one level above Ricard Bolotniks. But what Bolotniks brings, which is different, is just intensity and firepower, yeah. which those guys might not. Mm. You know, you saw that with Dimitri Bivol box Craig Richards. He was quite happy to, to fence it out and box at range. Bolotniks isn't going to do that. He, there's no way Bolotniks is just going to decide to sort of box at range and no, sort no. of coast through rounds. He knows what he's got to do. And Boatsy will have a game plan through Virgil Hunter, which will probably be get behind the jab, you know, move in and out of range. And, and once the pressure comes to him from Bolotniks, I think that will unravel quite quick because that's how he fights. But that's the one area he's got to be careful in, is to not do that too early or, or, or too, um, too carefree. Mm. Because the last thing he wants to do is just start trading off with Bolotsi in a, in a, a, a Bolotniks in a gunfight. No. doesn't have to. No, he no. can outbox him, he can break him down, he can work his body, he has a fantastic fun, jab. But he will, you, you, know, <laughs> yeah. you know he'll do it yeah. because it's in him. Yeah. We and see that from know. the Olympics, didn't we? There's this rawness, there's that fire oh, that makes him so exciting. Yeah, mm. plenty of rounds of sparring as well. He loves it, absolutely loves it. It's going to be a great fight. Not and what a way it. to, uh, no, definitely not me. I wouldn't be here to tell the tale. Um, what a way to close the show. Yeah, and actually, I think a great card. You know, I think, of course, this, this is the, the, the focus on the main event as well. But there's a lot of people talk about sleepers. You know, I, I love Ray Ford against Reese Bellotti mm -hmm. because Ray Ford, one of the top amateurs to come out of, of the US system, you know, starts building up an unbeaten resume. Really unlucky not to win his last fight, in my opinion, but has to fly over to the UK and fight Reese Bellotti. And, and you kind of get the feeling that with some of these guys, when they do that, like Ray Ford will walk out on Saturday. Reese Bellotti's got quite a lot of fans here. He's fighting a Brit in Britain and he starts thinking to himself, blimey, what's going on here? But then I. If, if Ray Ford can go and win comfortably against Bellotti, it's massive for his career. Yeah, he can show his pedigree. Yeah. I'll tell you something now, Cash Fruk against Castillo is going to be an absolute firefight. Unbelievable. I mean, you know, for those who don't understand that backstory, I'm sure you've told it, Castillo, you know, uh, born deaf, unable to talk, um, never had the ability or, or the funding to learn sign language, so has his own sign language with his trainer that they've built up it's over the last 12 it? years. Mm -hmm and lives on his own, never travelled outside of Mexico as well, and has two defeats on his record. And I spoke to JC from Sanford last night, who, you know, has, sort of helps us facilitate Lara and all these fights. I said, give me the backstory on Castillo. Told me that backstory, but then told me two defeats. It weren't even close to defeats. Right. He said, went on an away show, you know, lost, lost decision. He said, the kid is tough. The kid punches like you've ever seen. And you know the backstory and where he comes from. This guy is, uh, what an opportunity This for is him. the opportunity for him to change his I know, life. and I think, honestly, this is a really dangerous fight, Cash Fruk against Castillo. I'm really excited about Ronowski because I, I really believe that that, that fight is going to push Michael McKinson. I think he'll look good in that fight. He needs to make a statement. That's what I you said. Know, ultimately, with, with, we saw it a little bit with Galahad last week. Just sometimes the criticism is, yeah. 
Yes, for, for a hardcore boxing fan, wow, we love watching Galahad, we love watching McKinson, because, but as, as a, a, you know, a casual boxing fan or someone that tunes in, you saw it with Alan, Alan Babich last week. I mean, it did go, as I said, it went a bit Weatherspoons after four rounds. <laughs> but do you know how many people I come up to, had come up to me this week going, oh, my God, the, the savage, he is unbelievable. Mm. And ultimately, you have to entertain. Mm -mm. I think McKinson in this fight can actually do that. I think he can step on the front foot a little bit. I think he can let his hands go. Ronowski yeah. will be right in front of him. And Joe Caldina as well. Don't no, be fooled be by Joshua Hanley. I like this fight. Don't be fooled by this guy's... And actually, to be honest with you, sometimes like I wouldn't normally put Caldina in with a 10 and 3 kid because it gives people the opportunity to go, oh, he's 10 and 3, right? I promoted the show that Hernandez boxed on against the kid who was 19 and 0. He, he won that fight yeah. comfortably. It was an absolute war, mm -hmm. right? As he said, he lost to Chris Colbert, interim world champion, very talented yep. fighter. That's it. Mm. This kid should be 12 and 1. I'm telling you now, that is going to be a cracking fight. I rang really, Tony. Really fight. I rang Tony said, uh, before I'd done any prep on Hernandez. Mm. And I went, oh, what's this? Just uh, like ticking Tick over. Up, yeah. Ticking over. And he went, nah, Daz, you've yeah. got to watch him. Yeah. He's an handful. Really, really mm. good body puncher. He's mm. relentless. And. Um, yeah, like I said, I see the Colbert fight. He lost that, but he looked good. He yeah. pushes the action, and yeah, the other I th two. I think with Joe now, Joe's got a little bit of the bit between his teeth. Just talking to him today, you know, almost like a, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a star. Like I'm ready to go. I want to, I want to push on now, because what he was supposed to do is supposed to have this fight, then have another fight, then have a final eliminator. And when I sat down with Tony and the guys last week, he basically said, look, scrap the middle fight. Give me this fight. Once I win throw me in mm. because a lot of these guys coming and girls coming out of the, the Tokyo Olympics they're now going to be the focal point so Joe was an Olympian it's irrelevant now that was two, two Olympics yeah, ago yeah. right so it's his chance yeah. now and same with JB with Boatsy mm. but they're no one cares anymore. you won a bronze no. you, I mean yeah. of course it's a great achievement to win a bronze medal but it's not relevant but anymore no, yeah, you're not, not a bronze not medal now. Olympian you are, yeah. you're a world class fighter that is either going to become a world champion and be ready to take that step or, or not. not yeah. And now's with, um, the time to find out. Ed, mm. Sorry, just quickly, with Zelfa Barrett on the bill, is there anything to look into that with Cordina? I Any? like that fight. It's yeah. quite, we, we kind of get into a stage now where with this deal with the zone and with the budget that we have, we can make fights that sort of normally you'd go... You might not no, have 18 no. months yeah, ago. Fowler yeah. Smith is a perfect example yeah, 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 where yeah. normally you'd go, no, no, look, you know, we, we're both doing our separate thing. And then you sort of find out what the number is, and then yeah. if you pay it, you get the fight, mm. right? And that's the same with Zelfa Barrett against Joe Caldina. I believe both teams would take that fight, mm. but if they're the not looking at it. But, but, but when you start, isn't that what you want? You know, Joe Caldina <laughs> yeah. against Zelfa Barrett, what a fight. Yeah. Mm. For Zelfa, you know, he had the, the, obviously his mum passed away. It's been a very tough period for him. This is eight rounds on Saturday. Then we do the Kiko uh, Martinez rematch, which I think he'll win well next time out he wants to take that fight and just get rid of anyone's yep. you know fair play and then and then I love the Caldina fight and that could be a final eliminator mm. based on where they both are with the IBF at the moment mm. interesting well seven fights uh, on the bill on Saturday night all starts half past five on Before the Bell a um, couple of fights there and then seven o'clock local time on the zone around the world Joshua Boazzi in the biggest acid test of his career against a dangerous opponent in Ricard Bolotnix what a way to close the show on fight camp but we will see you right here tomorrow 1pm local time for the weigh-in thanks for your company this afternoon bye-bye bye-bye bye-bye